Welcome back to the MLS Zone where we talk about everything that is the MLS and today's video is on the top 5 midfielders in the league for 2019 half season because <laughs> I got to make that pretty clear. I'm only doing this for the half of the season mainly so because it's 65% of the season is already finished. So I decided hey why not do a half thing so when the season is complete we look back at some of these pick that we had for how they were doing in the league now we have great picks when i mean by we i mean me i have some great picks for you and i want you guys to critique it basically i want you to comment how these players fit in the team i want you to tell me how lucky these fan base are to have these player or are these players sloppy and why did i miss out on certain players and why didn't they pick certain players and as you know i answer everybody comments in that comment section i mean i wake up late in the night just to get to your comments so comment down below and you know what you should do as well hit that like button because you got to share the love to get love now let me go into this video and the first pick i should say and let me show you the ranking order where we'll be doing it from we'll be starting from the fifth then the fourth, then the third, then et cetera, et cetera. I get, you get the point right now. Um, and the fifth spot, we have Michael Burroughs. And yes, a lot of FC Dallas fans are going crazy right now. I know, I know y'all didn't expect this and some of you guys do expect it, but this guy is actually amazing. I mean, he plays the number eight for FC Dallas. And if you're confused of what is a number eight in the midfield, he is basically like a Steven Gerrard. He holds the team together. He is the clinical glue for that team. Now, if you're saying, give me some of his stats and just don't talk to me. I'm like, that's a little too mean, but I get it. You're hungry for the stats and I'm here to give it to you. I mean, this is what the whole video is for. But as for his stats, I mean, he only played 21 games this season, half a season and this man had eight assists. Yes, you heard me right. He has eight assists and two goals. Now, if you want to hear some of the other stats, key pass per game is 2.4. That means he passed his the ball to any player on the field to create a goal opportunity almost two times per game. That's incredible. He creates for his team. You could even imagine having him on your team and you know there's going to be a chance he creating for the team at least one time per game. That's that's really spectacular. And also, his accuracy passes per game is 21. That means in each game, he had 21 passes. And out of those 21 passes, 80% of those are on target. Yes, you heard me right. 80% is on target. Now, this guy is a really good player. I mean, his stats show him as something you should be proud of if you're FC Dallas fans. But he do have faults, and I got to give him that. He does have some faults. And his faults is basically he get he fouls a player 1.3 times per game. Meaning he's always into an interaction with a player per game. He never could get out of not fouling in a game when he plays. Now, that's bad. Compare, he's supposed to be the glue of the team. But that means they know not to mess with him in that midfield. The other thing that he has a fault of is possession loss per game. Right? He lost 14.4 possession per game. Yes, to be a Steven Gerrard in that midfield, you can't be losing the ball that much. You get what I'm saying? You, you really can't. But in all total, this guy is really the, he's really the shit. And that's why I gave him the rank five position. Now, you know the routine, critique, tell me that he deserved it. That is rank four. Yes, I have it to give it to Nicholas Gaitan. <laughs> I mean, the man is everything Chicago Fires want. 
You get what I'm saying? I mean, he is Chicago. Oh, man, this is this. Is this. <laughs> this channel. But hear me. I'm not saying Nicholas Gaetan is the only person on Chicago Fire. Because I will be wrong. Yes, I will be totally wrong. But guess his stats. This man played 18 match, had a total of 7 assists and 4 goals. And with a Chicago Fire team that is struggling. That is impressive. Now imagine if he was on a team like LAFC or LA Galaxy or Atlanta or New York City FC. I know you're waiting on me to say FC Cincinnati, but no. I mean, if he was on one of those teams that are competing, I think those stats will be buffed up. Like, mega buffed up. I mean, just look at his key pass per game. His key pass per game is 2.2. .2. That means he creates two chances per game for his striker or him, his fellow midfielders. Now, you're saying, how does this guy play? Like, he wouldn't be said to be played as a Steven Gerrard number 8. But I'll play him as a false 9. Meaning, I'll play him behind the striker. Meaning, he dressed back if needed to protect the midfield. And also, he could push up when needed. And that's why you see Chicago Fire play him in the right wing or the left wing sometimes because he knows how to get around players when need be now what's some of his other stats you're saying okay i'm totally understand that you need the stats and it's accuracy per game this man passed the ball 23 times per game on target and that is 69 percent chance of it landing to the player that he passed it to impressive yes impressive it's really good can't have and with the team that he has i think that's really outstanding but i know what you're saying right now i know what you're saying you're saying he's 31 and he's old and we don't need that in our league but you got to love what we have and i'm loving him you know he's putting in that work he's not listening to him the fans, he's not listening to anybody, he just grinded. And if Chicago Fire could get behind this guy, their season won't be that bad, you know what I mean? And you're saying, okay, what's some of his bad traits? Um, Some of his bad traits are possession loss per game. And that is roughly 18. He loses 18 balls per game. Now, there's a problem with that, seeing that the team that he's on is already lackluster in holding the ball and keep in possession but he also have another trait that i really don't like which is aerial duels one he basically wins 30 percent of his aerial dudes duels <laughs> but i know a lot of people say he's really not that tall so it's understandable I get it but that's why he's ranked four and not rank one let me know if he really deserves rank four comment down below because we need to have this discussion. Now, the next player I will be talking about is... Now, rank three, I have to give it to LAFC midfielder, Eduardo Atuesta. Now, a lot of you guys I know are LAFC fans. I know I have a large amount of subscribers that's LAFC. And I'm being fair. This guy deserves it. I mean, if you're looking for a midfielder that could play a Busquets role, role or a Gunduan role, I will go for Eduardo. I mean, this guy plays as a DM, meaning a defensive midfielder. Now, for a defensive midfielder in the LAFC team, I mean, my God, this man... He is doing really well. I mean, shit. When I was looking at the stats, I couldn't even believe that this guy did all of that. He was so under the radar. I wasn't hearing anything about him. 
I mean, I try to keep a nice little niche on the teams in the league and the players as well. You know, I try to get the stats. I'm, I'm always hungry to learn new things. But this man, he's been under the radar. Now, let me get some of, tell you some of his stats, right? This man basically has eight assists and two goals in 18 games. Yes, you heard me right. Eight assists, two goals in 18 games. I mean, and he's playing as a defensive mid. That means that man is not playing as a cam attacking mid forward or a central midfielder, which is CM. No, he's not. That man is playing as what I said, a Busquets role or a Gunduan role yet making those assists now let me tell you some of more of his stats this man have a total key pass per game of 1.6 yes so he makes at least one pass let's round up let's say two pass since it's 1.6 per game and you know when you're making those key passes to carlos villa that man is not gonna miss it Shit, he's in the top of the league. Just don't tell Zlatan that I that I said that. That man is crazy. Shit, look what he did to the LAFC player. But besides that, <laughs> let me get back to Eduardo. Again, yes, he's a defensive mid with eight assists and two goals in 18 games. And some of his other qualities I want to highlight is the accurate passes per game. He passed 69 balls per game. And out of those 69 balls he passed per game, 89, yes, you heard me right, 89% of those balls are on target. Shit, let's round up. Let's make it 90. At, at this point, I don't know why this guy is not rank one. But you're going to see who is rank one. And then you're going to say, oh, makes sense. Now, I know you're going to say, Yes, he's in a team that is stack of great players. So when you have great players like Carlos Vela or Diego Rossi on your team, you know, we really don't have much to do. But I say that's bullshit. You know what I mean? It's, it's complete bullshit. If you want to talk about great teams that's not performing, let's talk about Columbus Crew. Great team, not performing. Let's talk about FC Cincinnati. Great team. Not performing. <laughs> okay, okay. I can't kill myself. Not much of a great team. They need a little bit of work. But you get my point of view. Atlanta was suffering in the first part of the season. Hence, me creating the downfall video. They turned it around. But the point is, it don't matter what team you're on. If you have quality, you have quality. And this man have quality. Now, you're saying, okay, now that I know some of his good traits, what are some of his bad traits? Now, some of his bad traits are our aerial duels. Now, he basically wins 36% of his aerial duels. And as a defensive mid, that is bad. Yes, I found that horrendous. As a defensive mid, he is missing so much aerial duels. Or at least not winning them. Now, another trait that I found ridiculously terrible as well, which is not that bad, seeing that he is a defensive mid and he's supposed to keep everything tight and neat at the back, is that he has too much yellow cards. Out of 18 games that he played this half of the season, he has seven, yes, you heard me right, seven yellow cards. Shocker, I know, right? But it is what it is, you know? It is what it is. Now, does he deserve rank three and who should replace him let me know in the comment section y'all know how to do this already we're moving on to the rank two person yay and i know new england raves fans are gonna go crazy right now yes i mentioned you guys new england raves fans have to give it to your boy carlos gill 
Yes, it's, it's, I had to. I'm sorry. I know. A lot of Atlanta fans are going mad right now, saying why haven't we got a pick yet. But I got to give it to Carlos Gill. I got to, you know? I mean, shit. The man only played, what, 23 games and had eight goals and eight assists? Fucking hell. Like, come on. And we know the Raves was not performing before Brooks Arena. Yes, you saw I got his name right this time. I'm just, I'm, yeah, well, let's get back to the point. Yes! Even when Arena came, the output that he was putting on that field improved. Immensely. This man had eight goals, eight assists. Now you're saying, what position do they play him in? I'll say they play him as a false nine. And sometimes they play him as an eight in the midfield now they could play him as steven Giroud or a lampard type thing this man could be moved in so many ways because he is such a player welcome back to the mls zone where we talk about everything that is the mls and today's video is on the top five midfielders in the league for 2019 half season because <laughs> i got to make that pretty clear i'm only doing this for the half of the season mainly so because it's 65 percent of the season is already finished so i decided hey why not do a half thing so when the season is complete we look back at some of these pick that we had for how they were doing in the league now we have great picks and when i mean by we i mean me i have some great picks for you and i want you guys to critique it Basically, I want you to comment how these players fit in the team. I want you to tell me how lucky these fan base are to have these players. Are, are these players sloppy? And why did I miss out on certain players? And why did they pick certain players? And as you know, I answer everybody comments in that comment section. I mean, I wake up late in the night just to get to your comments. So comment down below. And you know what you should do as well? Hit that like button because you got to share the love to get love now let me go into this video and the first pick i should say and let me show you the ranking order where we'll be doing it from we'll be starting from the fifth then the fourth then the third then etc etc i get you get the point right now um and the fifth spot we have michael burrows and yes a lot of FC Dallas fans are going crazy right now. I know, I know y'all didn't expect this, and some of you guys do expect it, but this guy is actually amazing. I mean, he plays the number eight for FC Dallas. And if you're confused of what is a number eight in the midfield, he is basically like a Steven Gerrard. He holds the team together. He is the clinical glue for that team. Now, if you're saying, give me some of his stats and just don't talk to me, I'm like, that's a little too mean, but I get it. You're hungry for the stats, and I'm here to give it to you. I mean, this is what the whole video is for. But as for his stats, I mean, he only played 21 games this season, half a season, and this man had eight assists. Yes, you heard me right. He has eight assists and two goals. Now, if you want to hear some of the other stats, key pass per game is 2.4. That means he passed his the ball to any player on the field to create a goal opportunity almost two times per game. That's incredible. He creates for his team. You could even imagine having him on your team and you know there's going to be a chance he creating for the team at least one time per game that's that's really spectacular and also his accuracy passes per game is 21 that means in each game he had 21 passes and out of those 21 passes 80 percent of those are on target yes you heard me right 80 percent is on target now this guy is a really good player i mean his stats show him as something you should be proud of if you're FC Dallas fans. But he do have faults, and I got to give him that. He does have some faults. And his fault is basically, he get, he fouls a player 1.3 times 
per game meaning he's always into an interaction with a player per game he never could get out of not fouling in a game when he plays now that's bad compared he's supposed to be the glue of the team but that means they know not to mess with him in that midfield the other thing that he has a fault of is possession loss per game right he lost 14.4 possession per game yes to be a Steven Gerrard in that midfield you can't be losing the ball that much you get what I'm saying? You, you really can't. But in all total, this guy is really the he's really the shit. And that's why I gave him the rank five position. Now, you know the routine. Critique. Tell me, did he deserve it? At they will most likely pay Maxi Morales as that, a CF, center forward, right? Right behind the, the striker. You know what I mean? Some would say he plays as a false nine, but I don't see it as that. But let's get on to his, some of his stats. With key pass per game of 3.6. So let me round that up for you. Four. Yes, I round it up. With a key pass of four per game, the only person that surpassed him is Carlos Gill in creating chances for his team. Right? Crazy. Imagine if that man was on a team with the likes of Carlos Vela or Zlatan or Joseph Martinez. I want to say Zardes, but I'm not too sure. And I, I can't even say Altidore because we know what he does when he get chances. But we're not talking about those players right now. We're talking about Maxi. Morales. Now, this man is a decent ass player. I mean, another quality I like about him is his accuracy pass per game. He have a total of 41 passes per game with 80% of those passes on target. Impressive. Got to say, that is impressive. Now, if you're looking for some of his bad traits, I got to say some of his bad traits is his aerial duel. He only went 10% of his aerial duels. 10. But but seeing that he is a cam, I don't really expect much from him. But that is the only bad trait I could find for him. And I do have another one. The other one is fouls per game. He is sloppy when it comes to defending. But seeing that he is a cam, that's understandable. Now you're saying, what is it that he is sloppy with fouling is in a total per game he makes 1.6 fouls so let's round that up to two fouls he makes two fouls per game now that could cost his team dramatically because we don't know if those fouls are penalties or free kicks outside the box and if those are penalties and free kicks outside the box versus like Zlatan and Carlos Vela or even Joseph Martinez with that little funny penalty kick that he has that will be devastating so that is why i give him that as a bad trait now you're saying is that it <laughs> that's the list that's the best you could do mls zone is that the best you could do well i'm challenging you give me your list i want to see your top five players that did well for this half of the season in the midfield i challenge you and if you get the most like in the comment section for your list i'll post you in the next video i know you like that yes you heard me right i'll post you in the next video and guess what i hope you love the edits because i did a lot and i want your feedback because I'm working hard. Sleepless nights. Sleepless nights. Peace out.